Okay, so I'm deep down the dimension rabbit hole. Now, if you've been watching, we've been talking about these seven spiritual realms that come up in all different religions and all different cultures around the world. I'm like, are these dimensions? What exactly are dimensions? And that's when things got really confusing. Okay, so let's backtrack a sec. When we use the word dimension, what are we talking about? And that's where part of the confusion starts because we actually use the word dimension to describe many different things. We use it to describe another world, another realm, another plane of existence, but we also use it to describe other timelines. But technically, wouldn't an alternate timeline be in the same dimension, just a different perception of that reality? And then we have this whole discussion of densities versus dimensions. But I hear a lot of people say stuff like the first dimension is rocks and minerals and the second dimension is plants. And I'm like, but rocks and plants are in the third dimension. Okay, so I have many sources of different information here. And I wanna start with a direct quote from one of them. This episode, Levels of Consciousness Defined of Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia TV has a great breakdown of this. And he starts off by saying, as far as dimensions go, all the models are wrong. However, some are useful, which of course they're wrong. We're trying to define something that we don't have the language for, that we don't have the mental comprehension or capacity for. Something that at this point in our evolution, we can only access other dimensions based on our own personal experience. Okay, so now when people are talking about dimensions, a lot of times we're talking about levels of consciousness. And in this episode, Tim describes that a dimension is not a place. All the dimensions are intertwined with each other. They're all fluid. They're all in the same place. It's the level of consciousness that determines how that place is being viewed by the observer. Okay, so then we have Matthias De Stefano, who says we are living in all the dimensions. It's not a place that you go. A dimension is your perspective of reality. Now let's take a look at Dolores Cannon between death and life. The different planes occupy the same space. Right now, you are in a physical plane, yet spiritual aspects of yourself also exist. And that's because the spiritual planes are here too. All the planes are here. Then she gives the example of a radio. So right this second, all these different radio stations are broadcasting different songs right now. If you're just sitting here right now, you can't hear any of them. But if you go to a radio, which is a receiver, and turn it to that station, you'll be able to hear what's playing on that channel. So only when you're tuned in to that station can you hear that song playing or experience that dimension. Okay guys, I'm really excited to start this dimension series, but it's going to be a little different than my other series because as we just went over, all of the models for dimensions are probably incorrect. But that doesn't mean that we can't explore them and then at the end be able to connect the dots of what came up throughout all of those different models. So we might see something in part one or two or three of these series where they're describing dimensions differently. Let's keep an open mind and at the end of the series, evaluate the whole thing. And those of you that watch my longer form videos on YouTube know that whenever I do a TikTok series, I actually do connect with the Akashic Records and I ask them what needs to be in this series, what doesn't need to be in this series. And I was a little nervous to start this series because my other series were 10 years of research coming to life. Now this dimension series is a bit different for me because although I've been kind of like aware of some of this information, I've never done this type of deep dive. So I have had a little bit of nerves around starting this project because I don't know what the right answer is at the end. So I asked the Akashic Records and they said that this series is going to be for me to be a student and we're all going to learn this together. And the most exciting part is they said that my perception of reality will never be the same after this series and that anyone who wants to take the journey with me will feel the same way. So let's get into it. So as we start this dimension series, let's take a look at Carl Sagan, author, astrophysicist, cosmologist, all over, really smart guy. 
and he had a really great description about the dimensions. So this information is coming from the Carl Sagan Cosmos special, which you can find on YouTube. And actually the example he gives is based on a novel from the late 1800s called Flatlands by Edwin Abbott. And it was a satire about our world, but as told through a two dimensional world. There's also a 2007 cartoon version of it highly suggest. So Carl Sagan, imagine you are perfectly flat. We are living in Flatland. Everything absolutely flat. In Flatland, people could be squares, circles, triangles. They live in flat homes. They know width and length, but no height. They know left and right, front and back, but no up and down. But one day, a three-dimensional creature hovers over Flatland. And this three-dimensional creature is an apple. Okay, so this three-dimensional creature, this apple, decides to say hello down to Flatland. But Mr. Square is in his flat house and no one's there except for him. He looks left and right, back and forth, but no, he's alone. He doesn't know that above him, in the third dimension, there's a being. So the voice, maybe it came from inside of him. So then the apple, the three-dimensional being, is going to descend down into Flatland because he doesn't want to just be an apparition. He's like, no, I'm real. I'm here. But the three-dimensional creature, the apple, can only partially exist in Flatland. Only a slice of it would exist. So Carl Sagan stamps the apple and only the points of contact is what will exist in Flatland. And that looks like that, like a, a couple of dots. So what we know as a three-dimensional apple looks something like that to someone in the second dimension. Now, if the apple descends lower, and here's a great resource, the guy, the lazy engineer on YouTube. A three-dimensional sphere intersects flatland. It creates a growing and shrinking circle caused by the roundness of the sphere in the third dimension. But then that got me thinking, isn't it suspicious that all these planets are three-dimensional spheres and we just so happen to live in the third dimension? Okay, so let's go back to the lazy engineer because he does take it a step further. Not exactly the direction I'm going, but you'll see. And he gives a lot of examples about what things in the fourth dimension could look like to us in the third dimension. So if there was something cone-shaped in the fourth dimension, similar to flat land, passing through flat land, this is passing through the third dimension. It would appear as a sphere that would change in size rapidly. Then he proposes the question, now what if that fourth dimensional object, which we're using a cone in this example, was moving in a different direction than just up and down, how would that show up in the third dimension? This 3D slice of the hypercone is an ellipsoid a 3D version of the ellipse. And then he goes on to describe that at these different angles, all of these different shapes could appear. So that got me thinking and reminded me of this episode of Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia TV, season 10, episode 8. Emery asks about people seeing light orbs or shadow beings and asks if those are interdimensional beings and we're just viewing them that way. Similar to how an apple in the third dimension might just look like a couple of dots, Randy Kramer says, we know of one of the fundamental quantum components of reality are these states of frequency of quantum particles. And the highest frequency particles are called sacred light. And the lowest frequency particles are called corrupted light. So that's more than likely beings who are very high vibrational in sacred light or are very high vibration in corrupted light will appear that way. Will either emanate more light or appear as a shadow. So that got me coming back to the planets again. Now, if you remember in part five of my Alien series, that in 1977, a British TV station was hijacked and apparently taken over by aliens. But this part sticks out to me. For many years, you have seen us as lights in the sky. That's got me thinking about the stars. So we see stars as these like balls of fire or like planets, a spherical ball. What if? Stick with me, stick with me. What if the lights in the sky, the stars are actually beings themselves? But because we're in this dimension, we can only perceive them at most as a 3D ball. And wait, wait, so 
those of us that feel we have star origin and we feel connected to certain star systems, what if it's not that we're from that planet? We're a fractal of that being. Was this too much? Like say the Pleiades or Vega or Lyra, these planets that people feel very connected to, um, like they're from there. What if they are from there, but they're only a fractal of the soul that is the being that we're perceiving as a light because it's a sacred light and we can only see as far as the third dimension. Is it too much? we started this series talking about how a two-dimensional being might perceive a three-dimensional being. Remember how a apple in the third dimension might just look like a couple of dots in the second? But Carl goes a step further and he talks about the fourth dimension. Now let's say you have a cube, a staple here in the third dimension for us. One of our favorite shapes. We build most of our structures like that. We love a cube in the third dimension. But how could we represent a cube in the second dimension. A three-dimensional cube can also be represented in the second dimension through its shadow. The shadow is flat. Now a three-dimensional cube is perfect. It's got all the right angles. It's all 90 degrees and everything is perfectly measured and everything is perfect. But that can't be perfectly represented in the second dimension. All the lines are not the same size. All the angles are not right angles. But that is the cost of losing a dimension in the words of Carl Sagan. But keeping that in mind can help us understand the fourth dimension. Now, in the fourth dimension, there's a shape called the hypercube, which is also called the tesseract. But unfortunately, we can't see a tesseract because we live in the third dimension. But we could see the shadow of a tesseract. Okay, now let's hop over to a more modern source to help us out over here at Science ABC on YouTube. A tesseract is a cube that exists in the fourth dimension. And okay, just a reminder, we're talking about dimensions in the aspect of spatial dimensions with science and math, not spiritual dimensions just yet. So no dimension would be a dot. One dimension would be a line. Two dimensions would be a square or any other flat shape. Three dimensions would be a cube. Okay, so now let's imagine what it will be like in the fourth dimension. Okay, so here's our three-dimensional cube. What if every face of this cube was a three-dimensional cube? So we see that here. It's a cube, but every single side of it is a cube. Remember, a third dimensional cube, when we see it in the second dimension, it's not even angles. The cost of losing a dimension. That's when we come back here and realize that's why every side of this is not the same size and not the same angle. So what Carl Sagan is holding here in the third dimension is the equivalent of a shadow. Now let's go back to this book. You remember this book from my quantum physics video, The God Equation by Dr. Kaku. And later in the series, we're gonna get more into string theory and M theory and how they say there's 10 dimensions or 11 dimensions. But for right now, I just wanna look at one thing that Dr. Kaku said. Okay, so he talks about the holographic universe. I've done a ton of videos about this. Go and watch the Earthshift series. While you're at it, buy your fifth dimension Earthshift shirt in the JK Ultra store. But okay, a hologram is a two-dimensional image that reflects light to appear as a third-dimensional image. And as you guys already know, there's a ton of information about our reality being a hologram. So Dr. Kaku says, if our reality is a hologram, which a hologram in our dimension is a two-dimensional image that appears to be three dimensions. Stick with me. So Dr. Kaku says, imagine you're walking down the street. You're three-dimensional but your shadow is two dimensions. Same model applies. In three dimensions, there's all these different proportions. But when you go down a dimension and make it flat, you're gonna lose those angles and lose those measurements. The same way we see it here. The cost of losing a dimension. Okay, so when you're walking down the street, you exist in the third dimension, but the second dimension you are also existing in. So who's to say you're not existing in all the dimensions? And who's to say that our third dimensional reality is not just the shadow of a higher dimension? And that brings me to this like beautiful comment that was on the original video. When I asked, what if the lights in the sky are beings? Professor user person dropped this. We are the shadow of beings in other dimensions. Our entire lives are their shadow work. Now look at this image. Look the way that a shadow can cast on stairs, like four separate images, but it's all coming from one being. 
Are you guys, are you guys with me on this? Do you, you see what we're saying? And this goes back to the soul series. But look at this, like say these are two beings, two souls that are connected, but in their shadow world, they're interacting in a different way. Okay, so what is a shadow? Obscured light. So a shadow like isn't its own thing. It's just something that is there when light is blocked. And if we are the shadow, of higher dimensional versions of ourself, the way we have a two dimensional shadow, that means that the light that was originally us had to be obscured in order to create us. And let's go back to this, the cost of losing a dimension. So if we're a higher dimensional being, perfect, all of the perfect angles, just like this cube, in these lower dimensions, we can never experience our perfection. We can only see a shadow of it, which is obscured and the wrong angles and the wrong sizes. Because that commenter brought up shadow work, let's talk about Carl Jung. To confront a person with his own shadow is to show him his own light. The shadow is the blind spot of the psyche. Now, oftentimes the shadow gets associated only with negative traits, but there are positive aspects that people might hide within their shadow due to low self-esteem or false beliefs about yourself. When we say we're the shadow, it doesn't only mean that we're the bad parts of it. So if our existence, our life here in the third dimension is actually a shadow of a higher dimensional version of ourself, in order for that higher dimensional version to more deeply understand themselves. Now, what is shadow work? This is from innershadowwork.com. The shadow is the part that you have no awareness of. Shadow work is the intentional practice of becoming aware of your unconscious self and integrating those qualities. And all we have to do is experience all this pain and suffering of the third dimension. Well, that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs>be talking about levels of consciousness. Levels of consciousness is directly connected to dimensions. This information is coming from Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia TV, season 17, episode seven, levels of consciousness defined. And as we said previously, all of the models for dimensions are incorrect. However, some are useful and we're gonna explore that today. So keep in mind, a dimension is the habitat of a being at that level of consciousness. For example, a level three consciousness would be in the third dimension. A level four consciousness would exist in the fourth dimension. And as we talked about in the previous part, all the dimensions are right here. The dimension is your perception of this space, but that this space is also being used by beings at all different levels of consciousness. So let's begin. Level one. Level one consciousness is the awareness of being. Minerals, stones, planets, they exist on the first level of consciousness. And don't worry, we're gonna explore that more in future parts of this series. But for now, let's move on with the model that Tim from Cosmic Disclosure shared with us. Okay, so level two consciousness. These are beings that know they exist, but they do not know how to define themselves as individuals. They have no I awareness. There's no I am, they just are. So beings living on this level of consciousness would mostly be animals. And level two beings, which animals are an example of, their driving force is survival and food, mating. However, animals can achieve level three consciousness. Level three consciousness is I awareness, I am. Now, a level two consciousness can reach level three by interacting with level three consciousness, such as a dog. A dog can reach level three because a dog can think, hmm, I am a good boy. And that would make eye awareness within a dog. Now, level three consciousness can also be survival based, but to a different level. The way level two would hunt for food or find a mate, level three can cook its food, create a dish. Level three would find their mate differently than a level two. Maybe they would go to a bar and talk to someone that they were attracted to. There are routines and patterns that they can create in their life. Now, as a collective, humans have lived primarily as a level three consciousness. But many humans are existing at level four consciousness. Okay, now level four consciousness is more than I am. It's I have experienced which is very interesting because the fourth dimension in science and math would be time. And if the fourth level of consciousness is I have experienced, 
That implies a past, and past would be time. As I told you guys in the beginning of this series, we're gonna go through all different models and sometimes they might not say the same thing, but we're gonna point out when they do match up. If the fourth dimension is time and the fourth level of consciousness implies a past, adding up, let's continue. Now, Tim says another very important of level four consciousness is to understand that there is something after death. Now that makes sense. If level two and three are very focused on survival, it's because they can't perceive anything happening after they're gone. However, understanding that death is only a transition bumps someone up to level four consciousness. There's also the awareness that I can change my reality. The idea that you can change reality is the realization that reality is more fluid than we believed. And he said, beings that are existing in a pure level three state will not be able to manifest their reality. And he says that Earth is simultaneously level three and level four, that it's based on the observer on how they perceive it. For example, yogis in India, they can experience profound shifts in reality that some parts of the mainstream population won't. But if they get in contact with a guru, for example, they could elevate their consciousness as well. And this is the same way how we say animals can go from a level two to a level three by interacting with a level three. Level three can go to level four by interacting with a level four. Okay, so then we get to level five. And that's where it gets challenging to explain. So a level five consciousness will still have some perception of a body, even though it won't be a physical body. It has the concept of a body, the awareness of a body, but not the restrictions of our physical body. So a level five being cannot be displayed on planet Earth at this time, because at this point, it only exists in level three and four. Now, if a level five being wanted to come to Earth, we would experience the material physical phenomenon of a ball of light. And that explains those balls of light that people see hovering around, orbs floating around. But it can also show up other ways based on the interpretation of the person observing it and might appear as a ghost or paranormal phenomenon. He explains this by saying, imagine a 4K quality video. If all you have is a 1950s TV set, you're gonna lose a lot of the data and will only be able to perceive a black and white image on the screen. A level five consciousness still has a memory of their past they still have a personality. Emery asks, can a level five being travel into the third or fourth level? The typical way level five beings come to earth is through the process of reincarnation. However, they run the risk of getting lost in the karmic experience. A reincarnated level five being could get lost here and forget who they are. And they can tend to forget what they were before this. And that happens a lot. A level five can still be an individual. However, that concept of I, the I am that starts in level three and the I have experienced that is in level four, they still embody it, but it's evolved. The concept of I becomes integrated into a collective or we, that we understand, we are something, we have a history. And once again, that makes me think, whenever you read channeled messages, they often say we. Okay, now he does go all the way up to level eight, but let's stop there. And in the coming parts, we're going to compare this to some of the other models and other definitions of dimensions up to levels four and five. And don't worry, I won't make you wait this long for the next part. For some reason, I've had a lot of resistance to making this video and I'm glad that it's over, okay? Today, we are going to explore another model of dimensions. And as we discussed in the first part, all these models are incorrect, but they are useful. And at the end of this series, we're going to compare all of these models and see how they all add up. Let's get into it. We're going to explore another model from my favorite TV show on Gaia TV, Cosmic Disclosure, season 10, episode eight. When we think about dimensions, we tend to think of 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D, and so on. Those are the harmonics. And as far as we are able to understand, they go from one to 12. Then you have the overtones. The overtones are within each harmonic and there are also 12. The overtones are the stages of consciousness. Now think back to the last part, that model of dimensions was primarily based on levels of consciousness. But back to this model, as far as the 3D harmonic where we currently live, there are 12 overtones within it. The first three would be mineral consciousness. The second set of three would be plant consciousness. The third set of three would be animal consciousness. 
And the last set of three would be higher animal consciousness like us. Human beings tend to be at either overtone 10, 11, or 12. And when you get to overtone 12, you could start existing in 312 or 41, or be in both frequencies at the same time. But how do we experience other dimensions? As far as we understand, it is regulated by the pineal gland and neurotransmitter production. And it's the production of DMT within the pineal gland which creates the physical biological experience that we are currently experiencing. Okay, so the musicians and the electricians are going to understand this a little better than the rest of us, but here we go. So the definition of a harmonic is the same in math and science as well as music. They purposely word it really confusing. A harmonic is a wave that is a positive integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. Like here's the electrical definition. Frequency, which is an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency. Do they really need to word it like that? Okay, so an integer is a number, a whole number. Okay, let's go back. A harmonic is a wave that is a whole positive number above the original one. Now let's take a look at frequency. Okay, so we're gonna get into this. Waves are the building block of everything that we experience, but we need to understand waves a little better. A wave is a series of peaks and valleys. The cycle of a wave is the whole thing before it repeats again. So from here to here, that's one cycle. The frequency is the number of cycles. The way we measure a frequency is hertz. So hertz is the amount of cycles, peaks and valleys per one second. Okay, so let's get back to the harmonics. So remember, Randy Kramer said that the third dimension is actually the third harmonic. And within the third harmonic are 12 overtones. So what is the difference between a harmonic and an overtone? The harmonic includes all of the notes, including the original one. So this plus all of the notes would be the harmonic. The overtone only includes the pitches above the original one. So let's take a look at the overtones. The fundamental frequency, the original one, is the first harmonic. The second harmonic would be a whole number multiplied by the original. One times one would be the first harmonic. One times two would be the second harmonic. One peak and valley, two peaks and valleys. This would be double the frequency, triple the frequency, quadruple the frequency, and the hertz is the way we measure frequencies. So the second harmonic is the first overtone. Okay, so here's my diagram and you saw, you could tell I started getting real exhausted by the end of this and I didn't have enough space for the last one, but it'll do. So the first three overtones would be mineral consciousness. The next three would be plant consciousness. The next would be animal consciousness and the last would be higher animals, mostly humans. He said humans can be on the 10th, 11th or 12th Oh, actually, I, I did fit the last one. Because based on this model, there would actually be 13 of them. If he says the first overtone, and we know the first overtone is actually, let's not get technical, let's move on. But also, let's just note that this looks a lot like DNA. But now, why is this so important? Because this also matches up pretty perfectly to the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, everything is waves. Light, sound. So the electromagnetic spectrum is the entire measurable frequency of waves. So let's go over to YouTube, monkey see on YouTube, what is the electromagnetic spectrum? So at one end is radio waves. And as we see here, AM waves are lower than TV waves and then FM radio waves are a little bit higher frequency, more peaks and valleys, higher hertz than that. So then next we have microwaves, and that's cell phones, radar, and our microwaves in our home, to name a few. Then we get into infrared waves, and that's where us, the living creatures, are. And I'm sure you've seen thermal imagery before. That's how they use infrared waves to detect if there's life somewhere. You might have seen this before, where different human emotions are going to show up differently on an infrared camera. There's even studies that show this. And you might have seen this emotional guidance scale before. Our emotions are actually measured at different frequencies. And in 2016, MIT researchers actually created a machine to measure your feelings through radio waves. 
Okay, now after infrared waves, which also create heat, we get into visible light. So like all of these, we can't really see. We don't see our cell phone waves in the air. We don't see the radio waves in the air or the TV wave or the heat coming off of living creatures. So now we get into this little tiny slice right here, which is what our eyes can actually see. And then we have ultraviolet rays, which come off of the sun. X-rays, which we know can go through the tissue in your body, but not through the bones. And gamma rays is only as far as we've discovered so far. Okay, now let's go to part two of this series and go over something real quick. Okay, so let's go to Dolores Cannon's description of dimensions from between death and life. All of the dimensions are right here, right now, but they are different frequencies. Think of it like a radio. The vibrations, okay, vibration and frequency. The easiest way to understand vibration is by thinking of guitar strings. You play one of the strings, it vibrates up and down. The vibration is like the wave. A denser string is going to have a different vibration, a different wave than a less dense string. When you play a string, it does this if you were to see it in slow motion. So the vibration is the action. The frequency is the measurement of that action. So once again, dimensions are being described as radios. The vibrations occupy the same space because a vibration is about physical matter, but on different frequencies. So let's say that you're the radio. There's all these different radio stations playing different songs, but only the station that you're tuned to is the one that you can listen to. So as humans, this is our radio station that we are collectively tuned into, visible light. So then Dolores asks, can we become aware of the other frequencies? You are able to alter your frequency enough to interact with other frequencies. So let's go back to Randy Kramer who said, we can experience other dimensions through our pineal gland, through its production of DMT, to experience the flexibility to move from one frequency to another. Okay, but how would we alter our frequency? Through brain waves. Come on guys, I know this is a boring one, but we're landing the plane. So when we alter our brain waves, so if our normal awake state is beta waves, and through meditation are able to get ourselves to alpha or theta waves, this is how people have out of body experiences, astral travel, access the Akashic records, get information, channel information, like God, the different frequencies, tuning into the other dimensions. Okay, so let's recap because I know that was so much. Each dimension is a harmonic. The harmonic is a wave. Within the third dimension, there's 12 levels of consciousness, each one coming to a higher frequency with humans being at the highest frequency of our third dimension before we enter the fourth dimension. Waves are literally freaking everything, light, sound, everything, brain waves, emotions, thoughts. So each dimension is only frequency. Frequency is just a way to measure waves. Everything is a freaking wave. And vibration is just waves within physical matter. <sighs> Damn. First, I want to remind you, none of these models are 100% correct. So we're going to explore them all and then compare them at the end. This model is coming from Matias De Stefano and his show on Gaia TV Initiation. We're going to be breaking down episodes one through four. So let's start with episode one, Unity, about the first dimension. Now, like all of the models that we've discussed already, Matias also says that we are living in all the dimensions at once. And that dimensions are not a place, but they are actually a perspective. Okay, so the first dimension, Matthias describes it as unity because it is oneness. It contains everything. It is consciousness, but without creation. The first dimension holds all of reality and all of the perspectives within it. He gives the example of a sphere. Now, when you look at a sphere, you'll never be able to see the whole thing. The only place that you'll be able to see the whole thing is from the inside. 
Therefore, the first dimension is similar to the inside center of a sphere because that's the only place that you'll be able to see every part of the sphere. Okay, now in order for this one to experience itself, it has to go outside of itself. Similar to if you're home, you would have to go outside to experience something outside of what you have within your home. So the self splits into two, creating the second dimension similar to the way that a cell would split. And this creates two forces. One of these is called purpose. The other is called the mission. Purpose is a positive energy within the universe. And mission is a negative energy within the universe. Now this is a very interesting concept because the closer that we get to our purpose, the larger our mission will become. Now, Matias uses the example that if you were in a room and there was a light in the center of the room, the closer you went to that light, the greater your shadow would become. He also talks about how negative forces sometimes happen in our life. Now, these negative forces might seem bad, but actually sometimes they are redirecting us back to our mission. And this is a common thread that we hear with healers and teachers. A lot of times they experienced a near-death experience or a traumatic experience that actually propelled them to the role that they currently are in. Now let's get to the third dimension, which he describes as the Trinity. Okay, so there's like positive and negative. They're like splitting, splitting, splitting. It expands all the way to the edges, but when it reaches the edges, it reverberates back to the source. And these reverberations are going to create waves. And these waves will eventually create matter, the third dimension. And these waves are high and low, creating different energies between the polarities. Okay, so the duality of the second dimension, when it ripples back, creates form, which would be the third dimension. And as he said earlier, the dimensions are only a perspective, not a place. Now, as that form reverberates through as waves in the universe, it would create shapes. And as we know, the basis of everything is sacred geometry. Now, these shapes that are created from the form allows consciousness to be able to move differently. And these shapes are the beginning of the third dimension. Now, the shapes give order to the purpose and the mission. So then the points of the shape would be the goals within the mission. So going from point A to point B is one thing that you have to accomplish on the mission to better understand the purpose. I know this is really different than the other models, but that's why I like it. Okay, so now this third perspective is able to see positive and negative. We can see the polarities and we see that happening right in front of us in the third dimension. Uses the example that you have two eyes and then your third eye is the one that can see everything, all the perspectives. And he goes on to say that the actual Holy Trinity is vibration, energy, and matter coming together. This Trinity that we experience in the third dimension is the spirit, the soul, and the body uniting as one in the Trinity is how we experience physical form. So the spirit of the first dimension creates duality, the soul within the second dimension. The second dimension then would create the third dimension, the soul would create the body. Or the purpose creates the mission, the mission creates the goals in order for it to accomplish. The spirit, the soul, and the body are not three separate things. They are the same thing, just vibrating at different levels of consciousness. These different examples of the Trinity is just a tool for consciousness to experience itself. Okay, but at the same exact time that the third dimension was created, the fourth dimension is also created because the fourth dimension actually holds the third dimension. And when we say that it holds the third dimension, it's because there's four pillars of reality. The four pillars are also called the process. And there's four states within this process. The first is expression, then experimentation, then integration, then transcendence. These are the four pillars of every single process. This is the wheel of life. The way we experience these four pillars in the third dimension is to be born, to grow, to reproduce, and to die. Okay, so let's break them down a little bit. So expression is when the self expresses itself from inward to outward. It expands. 
experimentation is to live out all the different possibilities and all the different experiences so that we can better understand the self. Integration would be to bring all of that together, all of the, you've learned from the experiences and the expansion and the expression, bring it all together in the integration. It's the opposite of expression, which is outward. Integration would be to bring all of it back inward. Transcendence would be to understand the whole process and to transform into a new reality. Being born first step of the process where you're inside the body and you come outside the body and you expand into this world. The next step would be to grow the experimentation. We grow by all of our different experiences, our mistakes, our ups, our downs. And eventually we get to the integration, which would be to reproduce. Now that could be with a child where you take all of yourself that you've grown into and transform it into another being. Or reproduce could be creating a product. Or reproduce could be creating something else outside of yourself, a new being, a project, a creative endeavor. And to die would be to transcend to the next state of being or the next reality. This is the process of evolution. We see this exact idea show up in Native American cultures and with different depictions of it across different tribes even see this on the other side of the world with the Celtics and the Druids. And these four points are meant to symbolize the four equinoxes because this same concept is also happening around us in nature. Spring, summer, fall, winter, or within the female body. The follicular stage, ovulation, luteal stage, and menstruation, or new moon, waxing moon, full moon, waning moon. This depiction of the sun on a cross also comes up in Christianity because Jesus represented the sun and the cross is representing every time in every space. Okay, so then when we complete one of these cycles, we switch into another perspective in our next life. And then again and again, and then eventually you see it creates a sphere. And the way that Matias describes it is that karma means to learn. So when we learn at this perspective, we click to another perspective in our next life. And then we learn from that perspective. Once we've learned it, it becomes Dharma. Okay, now here's where it gets crazy. All these different perspectives actually create our physical reality because it's actually past lives, future lives, and we're manifesting the third dimension. And this is why I really love his interpretation of this because we constantly hear that the fourth dimension is time. And even though this model is a little bit out there, to me, this one describes the fourth dimension the best. So when we say that the fourth dimension actually holds the third dimension, it's because all of the time of our past lives, our future lives, simultaneous lives is actually what's creating our physical reality. And to me, that makes sense because if we are creating our own reality, then why does the physical world exist when we're not creating it? Because all the different perspectives of all these different lifetimes, time in the fourth dimension, clicking into all of these different perspectives is actually manifesting our physical reality into a sphere. <laughs>